Today's video, we're looking at the Hyundai Super 16 Turbo. We got 20 minute videos on old technology, computers, laser discs, and some CDs. We got two little dogs licking their balls on the screen. And now it's time for the show. Uh, see, I moved the white sheet away so we have some better contrast here with the nice beige case. But anyways, yes, this is the Hyundai Super 16 Turbo PC. Uh, you may be familiar with Hyundai here. In the United States, at least, we are primarily familiar with Hyundai as a Korean uh, car manufacturer. So I don't know if they make other things. Obviously, at one point, they made personal computers, or at least they stuck their badge on someone else's PC. But yeah, we primarily know them as a car maker. But like many, many companies in the 80s and 90s, they wanted a sweet piece of that personal computer market. And this is Hyundai's offering. Uh, this machine is a budget machine. We'll talk about why in a minute and we'll take a look at it. Um, you can probably see just from looking at the front, it is very... Um, unremarkable and I did some research on this machine I, I actually read some old computer articles um, on this and its its variations and they pretty much all kind of say the same thing it's just it's fairly reliable um, but just sort of unremarkable 8088 based PC um, and that's probably the most remarkable feature about this it that it's so unremarkable so <laughs> let's just take a look at it all right, so first off, we have the nice Hyundai badge here. You can see there's some, uh, with a lot of computers of this age, we get discoloring. Um, interestingly, I, there's some, a lot of discoloring here, and then right on this side, it's it's actually might be pretty close to the normal coloring, um, but there's some discoloring here. You can always retro bright. I don't think I'm going to bother uh, with this machine. I'm probably going to pass it along, so I won't bother, but yeah, that can probably be fixed fairly easily. Um, so we have uh, two five and a quarter inch bays. Here we have a floppy drive here. It's probably, uh, I'm guessing this is a 360K floppy drive, and this would appear to be a hard drive here. Uh, one big power button, and then we have a power LED. Right at the bat, you can see very plain. Uh, no LED for uh, speed. Uh, there, you don't even have an LED for hard drive activity. All you have is a power button, a power LED, not even a, a turbo light. Um, I don't even know if this machine has a turbo feature. I believe it does, but I don't see a turbo button or a reset button. So that's probably all done through the keyboard. Uh, very um, unremarkable. So uh, let's take a look at the side. Uh, because this is one of those machines where the keyboard port is on the side, um, since this is an 8088 machine, I believe this takes a PC-style keyboard. Uh, I do not have the official keyboard with this machine. I just have the machine itself. And then let's take a look at the back. All right, so here looking at the back, see it follows a trend of being completely and utterly unremarkable. Uh, we have, uh, here's our power, uh, and we have the pass-through for a monitor, which is nice. Uh, only two built-in ports. We have a serial and a printer port, or a parallel port, and that is it. That's it. Uh, over here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six slots for expansion cards. Um, right here, there is a video card. I didn't put this card in. Um, this, whatever's in this machine, is what was in it when I got it. Um, I don't even recall what this video card is, but we'll take a look in a minute. Yeah, very plain back, not a lot uh, built in as we can see. Now this, the manufacturer date on this is 1988, so that's pretty late for an 8088 machine. Obviously they were still selling 8088s at that time, but we had, yeah, there were much more powerful options out if you wanted. There were 286s, uh, there were 386s, 486 was just a year away. Uh, so this definitely would have been not for a power user, this would have been a budget machine. Uh, I was excited when I first seen this because I seen uh, like Super 16 Turbo and I thought 16 must mean 16 megahertz. It's got to be at least a 286. I was really looking for a 16 megahertz 286. I was really excited, but no, it is an 8088. Let's uh, open this thing up and take a look inside. 
Okay, so here we are with the top of the case off. Uh, I wanted to remove this uh, right here, the drives, because it is obscuring a little bit of the motherboard. Um, and even though I seem to have taken out all the screws, it does not want to come out, and I'm not, I don't feel like fiddling with it uh, too much. So let's take a look at the board. We can see most of it here. Um, first off, we have a little switch block here. I have no idea what those switches do, uh, probably to set, and maybe to video card uh, between like EGA, CGA, VGA, that kind of thing. Uh, we do have a battery here that looks like a lithium battery, so uh, that's one positive with this machine. We don't have like a barrel battery uh, that is, has leaked everywhere, although these can leak. It's much more unlikely uh, than with a barrel battery. Um, so uh, this is a little bit, this isn't standard exactly either, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, this is CR2430, so it's not the standard uh, watch CMOS battery you usually find in these machines. Um, right here, I believe this is the RAM soldered on. I believe this machine has 640K on the motherboard, uh, I believe. Uh, we have our slots, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8-bit. ISA slots. So we don't have eight, we just have six. Uh, so it's a little bit of a bummer there, not as many slots. Looks like not a standard AT connector. Uh, this is all one piece here. Uh, we do have a actual PC speaker. Uh, it's not at the front, uh, it's over here, but I suppose that's better than a piezo speaker. Built-in floppy drive controller. Um, and here is our CPU, and unfortunately, if you can see, it is soldered on. Uh, it is not socketed, which is uh, kind of a telltale mark of a budget machine. Uh, save a few cents on every machine by not putting in a socket. Uh, kind of a bummer if this chip should die. It, it can be replaced. You can't, you'd have to desolder it though and then either solder in another one or better idea solder in a socket but it's much much more of a pain than if it was just socketed. Uh, same thing with like upgrading it to a NEC V20. It makes it a little bit more of a pain. Actually a lot more of a pain. Um, now one thing that th this does have going for it, it is a P80882, which after looking that up, that looks like it's an 8 megahertz 8088, so it is one of the faster 8088s, uh, I believe they made them up to 10 megahertz, so this is on the fast side for an 8088, but remember this machine came out in 88, uh, at least this particular one, so like I said, we had 286s and 386s at that time. So yeah, there's not really too much else to this board. Uh, something interesting though, there was a lot of like debris in this machine. It looked like at one point there was a mouse maybe making a nest in here. I didn't find droppings or dead bugs or anything, but just a lot of like this weird debris. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just like in an outside shed or something. Um, so I guess the next thing to do, we'll look at the two cards that were in here, and then we'll, uh, I'll see if I can power it up and see if I can get it to post. Um, so the first thing we had was this MFM controller. Um, so this is a, I think it's a Western Digital. Um, yeah, right there, 27... Looks like a Western Digital 27X. Um, I have no idea what the size of the hard drive is in this thing, but it is an MFM drive. Uh, so MFM drives use the dual cable. Although there's no back bracket to this card, which is why there was kind of uh, just an open opening. <laughs> but not a not a big deal. So uh, yeah, MFM controller. So and the other card was the video card. So let's take a look at that. Alright, so here is the graphics card that was installed. So this is a ATI Graphics Solution Plus. These ATI cards seem to have been very popular. I, I almost always find them inside these 8088 machines. There's so many little variations of it. This one's a little bit later one. Um, it doesn't support composite out, uh, at least from what I read. But it does support uh, CGA, various CGA modes the Playtronics mode, uh, Hercules mode, so uh, it doesn't just do CGA. Um, 
There's a little switch on there for, you know, different setting for the different modes. Uh, it is the uh, 6... It is the 16800B chip on there. And, um, yeah. So I did look online, uh, and I did find a kind of a spec sheet for this motherboard and uh, telling me what these switches do. Uh, now, what I found online, the, the motherboard layout didn't actually exactly match this, so it might have been a slight variation. Um, but it is interesting because um, these first two switches, at least according to that sheet, actually control the CPU speed. And um, you can either set it for 8 megahertz or 4.77 megahertz. So uh, instead of a button or a command from the keyboard, it seems that you have to actually open it up and set it. Um, so right here with uh, 1 and 2 set to uh, this upward position, it is set for 8 megahertz. All right, so I'm going to try hooking it up. Um, it's a little bit of a hassle to hook it up to my CGA monitor right now because I have to pull it out and unconnect it. It's just a bit of a hassle. So I'm going to try uh, putting in one of my 8-bit VGA cards and see if, uh, see if it will work. Alright, so I have my uh, Trident uh, card that works within 16 and 8-bit slots. I've got it hooked up. So uh, let's see what happens when we hit the power. Sounds like the hard drive is spinning up. And I got a signal. Sorry for the glare. Um, but yes. Doesn't sound the greatest. Uh, looks like it counted up to 640 bytes of memory. Um... I wonder if it will boot up to the hard drive. It sees it. Hard, one hard disk drive. But will it... Ah, boot failed. Okay. So it might have been the motor. Um, it made a couple horrible... I've been I'm trying it a couple times. I restarted it. And um, it, just a second ago it started making <laughs> like a really horrible sound. And it sounded like it was going to boot into it. But... Um, and then it just stopped. Let's try hitting a button again. No. It's like it, it wants to. Um, I don't know if the motor is seized up. Um, I'm about to play around with it a little bit more. It looks like it wants to, it almost wants to boot onto the drive, but it's just not quite able to. Alright, so good news. After booting with a floppy drive, um, I was actually able to access the uh, hard drive and it's just got a bunch of random things on it so um, looks like there's a lot on this so I don't know if maybe this I'm guessing this is a 20 megabyte hard drive maybe um, but I guess it's possible that there's just no operating system installed on this drive maybe it was just being used as a data drive uh, like they were loading DOS on a disk and then just putting data on the hard drive I suppose that's a possibility uh, but it seems like I can access it fine um, when I load DOS from a floppy drive. So that's good that it's working. I, I didn't really see anything interesting on this drive, um, I, but I, you know, I'll just poke around on it a little bit more and uh, see if anything is interesting is on there. No, this game X3 was not actually on the hard drive. <laughs> I uh, just got bored of poking around. Uh, really wasn't much interesting in any of those files, even though some of them were labeled interestingly um, with interesting names. But yeah, this is uh, X3. I just got this game and I just wanted to try it out on this machine. Works just fine. Um, I should also point out real quick, there were a bunch of variations on this Hyundai computer. Uh, I believe they even had one variation that had the 10 megahertz 8088 in it. And I believe there was a slower one too, but they were all mostly the same, just the CPU is, it was a little different. There was one with less ISA slots. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to test one or two games and uh, show them here running directly from the CRT because I felt like it was a, a lazy day. I didn't feel like hooking up the video capture stuff.
And there we go. That was our relatively quick look at the Hyundai Super 16 Turbo. Hyundai's offering to the PC market in the late 80s. And it uh, more or less delivers what it claims to be. A fairly reliable, no-frills, 8088 budget PC. I mean, I gotta give it credit, the thing worked fine after, what, about 30 years. Um, so, I mean, we didn't get the boot from the hard drive, but I'm not even sure... So maybe it was just being used as a data drive. But I mean, it does still work after all that time, so that is saying something. So it does seem fairly reliable. Again, uh, no frills. Uh, CPU speed, 8 megahertz. That's nice, but again, there's just no frills. I mean, it's a very basic front. Uh, you only have 6 as opposed to 8 ISA slots. N not much built in at all. You've got a, one serial, one parallel port. And floppy controller. So one of those ISA slots is being taken up by a, uh, you know, a hard drive controller card. There's just better options if you really have a craving to game on an 8088 or you want an 8088. There's a lot of better options than this machine, but it does work as advertised. So if you have one, you know, if you have a chance to pick one up cheap and you want an 8088, sure, grab it. But just know there are better options. So, uh. Thanks for watching this video. Do uh, you have any comments? Comment in the comments. If you like this kind of content, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Huh. Not even a 20 minute video. I mean, for a theme song that boasts about, you know, 35 minute long videos and at least 20 minute videos as originally stated I mean I'm not even coming in at 20 minutes I, I need to find some kind of filler huh does does the cat care does the cat care about the beam? Sort of. You still care? Yeah, yeah. You care. You don't. You don't care at all, do you? No. No. Okay. All right. So if you're still with this video, um, I guess I can pad it out some more. So how about uh, I give you a sneak peek of some upcoming machines that I'll be um, reviewing or looking at? So sure. May as well. Haven't done that in a while. Um, first of all, uh, over here, ooh, there's, there's a sneak peek of something, but we won't talk about what's in there. Actually, below that is another tower, and I'm keeping that a secret. Um, our Apple II E is more or less ready to go, um, although I'm missing a bezel on that color composite monitor, which is bothering me a lot. So this guy right here, this is our K6 uh, 3 Plus machine that I'm going to do a video on eventually eventually okay we have our Amiga 2000 actually the video for this is done and edited and ready to go I just want to write an article on it for the blog um, so yeah that's gonna be a good one although there's still some upgrades I want to do to this so in that corner down there that you'll know that case uh, well the blu-ray stacked on it that's the um, old-timey K5 uh, machine I've actually done some more things with that and there's going to be another video on that and then under that is a Vectra I'm going to do a video on and under that I have a tower of a, a FX57 um, so that's going to be a cool more modern XP uh, but yeah that's a cool uh, cool CPU it's going to be a cool machine so those are some upcoming videos and uh, thank you for watching somebody's in a bad mood today you in a bad mood yeah, he's, he's in a bad mood. Good thing he has no teeth left anymore.